Hey, this is Jeremy. I want to give you guys a quick announcement. You'll see links down in the show notes or in the video description over on YouTube. Those links are affiliate links. Those help us generate income to continue to produce this show. So if you guys click on those links, purchase something, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast geared toward the hobby weekend woodworker. Your hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything in woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. Welcome to episode number four of Woodshop 101 podcast. Today we will talk about table saw blades, router bits, and how we keep them clean. How are you doing tonight, Drew? Doing pretty good. Glad to be here again. So am I. After a few days delay, uh, family getting in the way and, and day jobs, it's glad to be back. And muscle pulls. Don't forget. <laughs> yeah, and muscle pulls. <laughs> How, how'd you do that? Uh, you know, I wish I knew. The, the rib cage pull, I can tell you, I was uh, assisting a patient at my clinic where I work uh, the wheelchair that he was in, he was kind of crooked in the doorway. And when I went to kind of reposition the chair by picking up on the back end, uh, my rib cage just snapped and I was, it was hard to breathe, move just about anything that I took for granted was difficult to do. So, uh, it, it put me down for about three or four days. Yeah, that sounds pretty painful. So you're feeling better? Oh yeah, the the twinge in my my rib cage has been gone for a couple days, but my uh, neck just went away this morning. Well, that's good. At least you can get back out in the shop. Hopefully, uh, this weekend. Yeah, I actually plan on uh, doing some some work uh, tomorrow evening over the course of the week. So, right. I'm ready for it. All right. So what's uh what's going on in your shop? What what do you plan on starting with tomorrow and working through the week on? Well, um. I've got plans for a uh, little bench that I'm going to put inside the uh, the shop by the back door so my wife and I can have a place to sit down and take our shoes on and off because she doesn't really like tracking in shoes into the house. Um, so I've got a just a little bench with a uh, uh, storage shelf underneath it, but the way I'm going to build it is uh, going to be a little different. Instead of it being just really slapped together with pocket screws, I'm actually going to make it a bench of joints. So every every piece that's going to be uh, assembled is going to have a different kind of joint. Um, the legs are going to be attached to the skirt by a dado joint. Uh, the shelf to the legs are going to be attached with a sliding dovetail. Um, the skirt to the top will be attached by an offset tongue and groove. Uh, and the legs to the top will be attached with pocket screws. So it'll be it'll be an interesting project because there are going to be a, uh, different ways to to join pieces of wood together. So I figured it'd be kind of cool to show them all in one project. Yeah, I can't say that I've ever seen somebody use uh, several different joinery methods uh, in one project, but it'd be interesting to see. Um, and and it shows that one small project can be done several different ways. Exactly. Um, you know whether whether you go as beginner as is pocket holes or you go uh, a little more advanced with sliding dovetails you know it, it can be done in multiple of ways um let's see i actually just released a video today uh one that i've been promising for a while now um on how to uh turn and finish a wooden pin uh back in episode number two i of this show i had promised people that I would show how I turned a wooden pin uh, versus an acrylic pin and how it's finished um, because wood's a little more beginner friendly than acrylic. Acrylic's got to be turned a certain way uh, and it's a little harder and it's got to be finished a certain way, uh, pretty much just buffing through 12,000 grit sandpaper. But a wooden pin, a little easier, a little more forgiving um, and if if you can't, or if your turning technique's not very great, you can at least sand out your mistakes. Um, acrylic, it's harder to do that. So I finally got out in the shop and and made that video. In fact, I made that video about 
a week ago, um, or a little more than a week ago, and it's taken me this long to write the show notes because I started writing the show notes for it, and then I was like, oh man, that, that actually sounds like a good article on its own. So I took that out and I started another article, and then I started down another trail on another article, and I was like, crap, I need to go back and finish show notes and get that released. So I wrapped that up this afternoon and finally got it released out, and so hopefully it'll be sitting in your guys' inbox. Uh, you can go over there after you listen to this and watch that. So yeah, that'll be that'll be cool because I haven't I haven't really got into turning a lot. I I think seeing uh, something on a beginner level would be good for me because I plan on getting into turning sometime uh, pretty soon this year. Yeah, you know, turning turning wood versus something like an acrylic. Um, or even like a stabilized blank that stabilizes with resin is a lot easier. Um, it, it it's easier on your tools for sure. Um, and I and I right now I have traditional tools, but I use easy wood tools, uh, carbide tools, and I I love them. Um, they're easy, they're quick, and something about turning man, just getting out in the shop and in an hour, two hours, or thirty minutes, you have a completed project. You know, I just it gives me a sense of satisfaction. I don't think I'll ever get rid of or, or stop doing traditional uh, woodworking because I like the design aspect and the build process. But every once in a while, when you just want some instant satisfaction, jump on the lathe and, and you know, shortly you'll have a completed project. Yeah. So, it, it's definitely something I encourage people to get into. Um, it, it does look intimidating, but you start off with something easy like bottle stoppers or pins. It's it's pretty easy, um, and then you'll quickly find yourself down that rabbit hole, uh, and it gets expensive quickly. I was about to say, expensive and addicting. Yes. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go ahead and start off on tonight's topic, um, and one that we've talked about um, several times. Let's, let's talk about saw blades. What? type of saw blades more specifically for for table saws um do you recommend or or do you use um well i actually have two different brands that i use and only because recently uh i had some sent to me by uh, uh freud uh tools they uh i had started out using craftsman uh carpentry and uh woodworking blades and if you have never seen them there, you can just go into Sears. They're uh, black coated, uh, just like paint coated, and they actually have woodworking written right across the side. And they're one of their more high end blades. They're about sixty bucks a blade. And the only two that I really use in my shop uh, primarily are the uh, combination blades, which are about a fifty tooth count blade, and a uh, a plywood blade, which is around an eighty tooth count. Uh, I use full kerf. Uh, I don't necessarily like using the uh, thin kerf, um, mainly just because of the the incremental uh, size or width of the blade. That I mean, if you use a full kerf blade, you know that the kerf is going to be exactly an eighth inch. Uh, when you go into a thinner kerf, uh, that can that can take it down a little bit and and will screw up some fine measurements that you're trying to to uh, to nail down. So, yeah, and I I agree with that. I think. You know, full curve. I, I use full curve for the pure fact that uh, the safety aspect. My table saw came with a riving knife. A riving knife was designed for a full full curve blade. I don't want to have to um, rig up a, a splitter um, or rebuild a, a riving knife for it. Um, so I just stick with the full curve, um, and then hopefully later down the line when I upgrade table saws that have a bigger motor then i won't have to worry about ever going back to a thin kerf right and well plus in the the full kerf has less vibration because of it's just a little bit thicker yeah so those are really the two blades that i like to use are the plywood and combination blades um i really don't have much much more in my arsenal and i mean i have some in my uh radio alarm saw and my uh miter box sliding miter box saw but they're fairly the same thing I, I tend to keep high tooth counts in those because you do a lot of cross cutting and I you just don't want a lot of tear out. Yeah. Um so would so would you say you 
recommend those two brands? Um, um, the brand that I would recommend, and it's only because I, like I said, they recently sent it to me. Um, I've never tried uh, Woodworker Twos or nothing, but the the Freud blades are really high quality. Uh, the ones that are made in Italy, they are crazy, crazy good. Especially their uh, glue line rip blade. Um, <laughs> you don't even need a joiner. It seems like with that blade, I mean, it, you run it through the saw, and it's just a really clean, straight edge that you can go straight to joining up two pieces. Um, so right now, the the Freud blades are are my my favorites right now. My uh, Craftsman blades, I just kind of keep on hand whenever the Freuds get a little bit uh, uh, dull <laughs> that I have to send them out for sharpening. And I think that's that's another reason. You know, I don't know much about Craftsman um, saw blades, and I don't really know how well they can be sharpened or if they can even be sharpened. Um, but I definitely think in the long run, spend a little more on a blade um, that you can take down to uh, like Woodcraft, um, Rockler, or you can send back out to uh, Freud and have sharpened. I think in the long run, that's going to save you money. Um, and, and I'm pretty much speaking from experience because I use the Home Depot low special blades. Go in there and spend twenty or thirty dollars, and I pick up a blade. So over the course of my woodworking, I've probably spent a couple hundred dollars on table saw blades. Why can't I just fork out the hundred bucks and buy like a Freud uh, Premier Fusion blade, their combination blade? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, that's, <laughs> that's something I hadn't figured out, but I'm going to. I, I, I have settled on it that um, these disposable blades, uh, as you will, that uh, they, they only get me so far. Um, and, I, and I've spent a lot of money on them. Um, are they great? Yeah, they're awesome blades while they're sharp. Um, but that's the thing is not a lot of people will actually try to sharpen them because the tool's still... Uh, maybe not very strong, um, or it heats up and then it's going to lose um, it, its properties, so it won't stay sharp. So um, I think I'm going to switch, and and I've really looked at Freud. Um, I've looked at the woodworker too. I've talked to a lot of people, um, people like Mark Spagnolo uh, swear by it, um, but then I go talk to people at Woodcraft um, and everybody else that uses them and uses Freud. And they say the the Woodworker 2 is more designed for uh, full blade height. No matter what you do, it's supposed to. It's designed to be done at full blade height, um, and it generally has more vibration. That, that's why they recommend the stiffener. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I've never used it, so I don't know. Um, but I don't want to do a lot of what ifs um, if I'm going into the place that I buy my tools, and they're and they're telling me their experience with it um, versus Freud. So I think I've decided I'm, I'm going to at least in the next probably month, um, I'm going to get the Premier Fusion combination blade for the table saw from Freud. You so, will like that blade. Yeah, you know, and a lot of people have said it. And in fact, you know, it, it's only been out probably right around a year, maybe not even a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and... And I like the fact that it's it's a flat bottom blade because all the teeth um, go opposite of each other, um, and there's they put so many technical aspects behind that blade to make it run, you know the tip top shaping. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna see if it makes uh, my little job site saw, uh, my little contractor saw a little a little better. Um, you know I really wanted to upgrade table saws. I really thought about going to the 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 new saw stop job site saw but for thirteen hundred dollars i can't justify that um because in a few years i hope to upgrade to a cabinet saw right so the the probably the cheapest way out of this is to upgrade into a premium table saw blade that's what i'm probably going to do and you know, when when I finally pull pull the punches and I buy it, I'll let you guys know how I actually feel about it, uh, which is probably going to be a lot better than my dull DeWalt blade that's out there right now. <laughs> um, 
I just have to tell myself when I'm next time I'm in Lowe's or Home Depot, don't pick up that blade. Just go order one. Um, or go to Woodcraft and pick it up. Yeah. So, all right. Well, so we kind of talked about blades. Um, do you, do you stay? You said you stick with combination. Is there any reason why you don't you stick around the forty to sixty tooth? Um, versus a 24 tooth or a 90 to 100 tooth? Well, the 24 tooth mainly is used for ripping. It's horrible for cross-cutting. Um, and the, the higher tooth blade is, is great for cross-cutting and not so good for ripping. You tend to get a lot of, lot of burning because there's a lot more mass of blade uh, that uh, will drag the wood and, and cause burning, and the ejection rate is not as, not as good. Um, so the combination blade is a tooth count that's in between those two, uh, which give you a, a good ejection rate uh, for the sawdust as well as uh, a decent cross cut. Not the best cross cut for plywood and things like that, but uh, just for standard wood like you know your your walnut and, and oak, uh, you get less tear out than a twenty four tooth blade if you were to cross cut. Uh, so that's why I tend to keep a combination blade on hand is, is just it can stay in the table saw for longer periods of time rather than changing from one blade to another to another uh, just to get the kind of cut that you want. Um, it just depends on what kind of finish that you want on your cross cuts if you wanted to go to a higher tooth blade just to minimize the tear out. Yeah, and that's so I agree with you on that. And, you know, I don't have the time to... The, the extra minute or two minutes that it takes to change blades every time I want to change my cuts. Um, especially, in, and I know you can attest to this, when you're videoing it, when, when we're shooting the video on a project, it increases our build time dramatically. Well, now you're adding two minutes every time you have to change the blade just to get a cross cut or a rip cut. It, 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 that's going to increase your time to get that video out um, and get that project done versus the slight difference that a combination blade would have. Um, so I, I will stick to a combination blade just for the pure aspect of it saves me time in my shop. Mm -hmm. it, it gets the project out the door a little quicker, gets the video to you guys a little quicker. Um, and overall it makes me a little happier because I don't, really enjoy unplugging my saw you know taking off the table insert and wrenching the blade up and unloosing it and i that I, I don't enjoy that so keep the table saw blade in there um until i need to move into something more specialized like a plywood blade um, or and, a dado stack and and plus the the uh, premier fusion blade like you said it had a uh, a flat tooth bevel bevel on it uh, which is another thing I, I uh, like to have. I can keep that in the table saw. So if I, if I need to nibble away anything for maybe like a, a half lap joint or um, maybe a small dado, um, I don't have to change my dado stack because of that flat tooth bevel. I can I can eat away a whole bunch of material a uh, single pass at a time and have a flat bottomed uh, groove or dado and uh, don't have to worry about changing anything. But if you go buy blades at Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that, uh, you're going to find blades that have the alternating tooth bevel, which gives you a kind of a groovy-looking bottom, which, I mean, if you're trying to make a nice, clean dado or, or groove, it's really not the most desirable thing to have. Yeah. So that's just another time saver. Exactly. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about router bits. Do you have any specific brand um, or specific router bits that you prefer in your shop? Um, I, I hate to say this. I, I keep going back to uh, Freud, but um, I've, I've gone through several router bits with Craftsman just because you know you have a Sears nearby or anything like that. You're going to want to buy, you know, something that's convenient, of course. Uh, and you can buy router bits from Lowe's and Home Depot, but um, it, 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 it kind of comes back to the money that you spend. Uh, if you buy a cheap blade or a cheap router bit, um, you're going to end up probably replacing it or having it sharpened more and more often uh, than if you buy a quality one. And like you said, the, the Freud company tends to put a lot of technical aspects into their blades and bits, so the uh, the router bits that I've recently started using are Freud, and um, they are 
very, very clean cutting. Uh, and for some reason, I, I don't know why, but the pitch from like pine and stuff doesn't seem to accumulate as bad <laughs> on those uh, Freud blades. It's like they've got some kind of Teflon coating on them. I don't know. Yeah, you know, Freud, in fact, I don't know of any other brand. Um, they, there could be out there. I don't know. So if you guys know, give us some kickback on it. But I think Freud is the only one that has... Um, Started a line of, uh, I think what they call them, quadrucut blades, where they have mm-hmm. actually four blades on it versus the one or the two. Uh, you're supposed to create a, create a cleaner cut. Um, the, yeah, they're a little more expensive, but ultimately goes back to the table saw blade. Does it save you time in the shop? Um, if you don't mind cleaning up your cuts, then stick with a, a single bevel or a double bevel. But if you want to spend more time designing the next project, getting that one out the door, um, then then look at the quadra cut. Um, like I said, I pers- personally have never used it, but I've heard nothing but good things about their quadra cut line. Uh, so, do you have any specific router bits that you think should be in your shop at all time? Um, the the profiles. Uh, really, you need to have a a flush trim bit. Um, a V groove bit is is sometimes nice to have, especially if you're making signs, um, roundovers, and uh, cove bits are are also a nice starter starter bits to have. Um, in my opinion, and and people will probably argue this, but having the the half inch shank bits over the the quarter inch shank. I feel are a lot more safe uh, as well, just because the the vibration is less, um, and because there's just more material on the shaft uh, <laughs> to uh, have a chance on breaking, which it can happen. I'm not not saying that it will or or it does very often, but I mean you you have less material that uh, it's just a it's kind of a weak link of your bit. So I I prefer to have a, a half inch shank bit uh, and those profiles that I mentioned. Yeah, it, it, and it goes back to, in my opinion, saving money again. Um, if your router bit, or your, sorry, if your router can withstand a quarter and a half uh, inch collet, then go with the half inch bit. Because when you upgrade that router, and say you get the Porter Cable three horsepower, or the Triton three horsepower, and you put it into a router table, those are pretty much going to strictly be a uh, a half inch collet. So if you've invested all your money into these quarter-inch collets, you won't be able to use those bits into your router table. So if your handheld router will accept both, then go with the higher, the thicker bit because they'll spin faster, um, they'll spin cleaner, less vibration, and you'll be able to use them in that bigger router. So for me, if I, if I can get it in a half inch, I get it in a half inch. I'm, I'm exactly like you. Um, I don't want to have multiple bits in both quarter inch and half inch. To me, I'd rather spend money somewhere else in the shop. Right. And don't, don't get us wrong here is that, I mean, if you're a beginner woodworker and you're wanting to learn to use a router, uh, the, ha- the quarter inch shank bits are more affordable and they'll, they'll get you started, especially the starter kits like you would find at Sears, uh, with the craftsman line. And there are also starter kits with Freud and, and uh, other companies as well, but we're just saying that the the half inch are just uh, after you've after you've been using your router and you become more serious with your woodworking. Um, if you're if you're looking for money savers and time savers, as well as just a cleaner cut for that matter, uh, the half inch shanks are a lot better yeah, choice. I- I- exactly, and if so, basically, if you're looking to uh, pretty much just do edge profiles. The cheapest way to go is a compact router, um, which they generally only accept quarter inch. You know that that's a perfect example of a quarter inch bit is a good way to go. Um, I don't know of any compact routers that accept half inch collets, um, but that's just because I don't really have one in my shop. Do I want to get one? Yes, because I'm tired of getting out a big two and a quarter horsepower to just run around. A, a quick little plaque or, or a table. 
So. Yeah, I know. I've been meaning to give me one of those too. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that's a topic for another discussion, another day. Um, router bits that I prefer to use, uh, I haven't had any for. Um, I will probably get one. In fact, I'm planning on a new workbench build. Um, in fact, it, it's going to be a budget workbench, a budget Rubo build. Um, and we'll see how budget it is because I keep trying to reel myself back from buying bench crafted hardware. Um, but I think I'm going to build the entire thing out of two by fours. I think it's going to somewhere run in about 15 two by fours. Um, that's that's going to exceed the the width of my planer, so I'm going to have to flatten that top somehow. Well, Freud makes a one and a half inch um, straight bit that will do a really good job of flat. It won't make it perfect, but it will do most of the work for you. Um, and I could spend an hour using an inch and a half, or I could spend five or six hours using you know, a quarter inch or a half inch, three quarter inch straight bit. So I will, that will probably be my first purchase with Freud uh, router bits will be that inch and a half. Um, the, my go-to company is CMT. Um, I, I use their yellow line, which I believe is their commercial line. Um, their, their black line, um, which color differentiates the bits, either orange or it's black. I, th- I believe the black line is more of your um, like hobby shop line. I just I, I jump on Amazon and that's where I get my bits from because I get them in free prime shipping. Uh, I get them here in two days, um, and I generally only find the orange line bits. Um, that's why I go with the orange. Um, but I stick pretty much with CMT uh, more for OCD reasons, um, and I know this. It's probably, I don't know, maybe six months ago that it was discussed on Wood Talk. Um, I'm one of those guys that my tools have to match color-wise. I just, <laughs> I, I can't, it may be a better tool, but it will drive me insane if it looks different. Um, so all my router bits are CMT orange bits. So I I, I don't know what I'm going to do when I get a red Freud bit. Um <laughs> You're gonna have to get rid of all the orange. No, no, because uh, that's that's a lot of m- money invested there. Oh, I just fun. might have to put it in another drawer so I don't oh, see yeah. it. Out of sight, out of mind. It, see, I have a couple yellow bits uh, that I got from some. I think the place was called uh, Workshop Tools. I think I got it in Gatlinburg, no Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Huge huge warehouse full of tools and bits and um they're they're like the like they manufacture their own tools and sell them kind of like harbor freight type thing um and i picked up these bits they had a huge bin of them and i picked them up for like a dollar 25 a piece um the quarter inch collet i picked up a round over a cove and a roman og to give them a try and they're great bits um but I live nowhere near that company, so trying to get them is a pain in, in the rear end. So I stick with CMT more for the pure fact that they're great bits and they all look the same. I, I'm sure I'm getting judged from that, but it, <laughs> it is what it is. I can't control it. I try. Um, you know, I, I really didn't want to get into the Festool line because they're expensive and they're going to have to look the same. But... <laughs> I did just order my second Festool tool. Um, in fact, hopefully uh, you'll see in an, I'm building another table that will probably be in another video. I just ordered the Domino 500, and that will be the joinery method of choice. You'll probably see that. Um, Boy, it's a good thing your tools don't all have to match. <sighs> Look, there's certain lines that have to match. Like I have a DeWalt router. And so I want to buy a compact. It's probably going to be the DeWalt compact, although the Bosch Colt has is proven to be a better compact router. So we're gonna have. I'm gonna have to sit down and have a conversation with myself. Yeah, <laughs> gonna go at war. Yeah, we're we're gonna have to see who who comes out at this. <laughs> and I, I I gotta I gotta have my OCD somewhere because I I try not to do it in my house because my son's already starting to pick it up, and I don't want my son to have it. 
So, all right, well, now we've talked about all these different bits and blades um, that that we recommend. Obviously, we want things that can be sharpened and resharpened just because it saves time and money in the long run. Um, but I, so I usually get my table saw blade, like I'll, I'll try to sharpen them about once a year, once every six months, depending on the usage. Um, but those times in between, uh, when you start noticing burning, uh, or the burning smell, uh, what do you do? Uh, well, you really need to, you need to clean them. You need to keep them clean. Um, especially if you go through resinous woods, uh, you go through something like babinga, um, which is pretty resinous, um, where you run through um, anything that's had a finish on it and, and you try to cut it that has resins in it. It's going to coat your blade and your blade's going to want to stick in that in the wood as it goes through. So how do you clean your bits and blades or do you clean them? Um, back when I first started woodworking, I did not know about cleaning your blades. I mean, I thought when you smelled burning, it just means your bit or blade was dull. Um, and a lot of people make that assumption, which uh, can can be a wrong assumption to make, because generally it just means that your your blade or bit is dirty. It's got pitch on it. Uh, it, it just needs to be taken off, and then your bit or blade works almost as good as new. Um, so after I've been doing woodworking a while, I mean, I I tried several. Well, I wouldn't say several. I've tried a couple methods. Uh, one of them was just using gasoline and I, I, I if somebody just blows a gasket you know, I'm sorry <laughs> but I would use gasoline and a, and a toothbrush and uh, I would submerge it in the gas for a little bit and uh, use a toothbrush to eat it away and I'm not sure if that has any wear and tear on the, the carbide tips or anything like that so I, I stopped I stopped that method after a while and uh, I just started using pitch remover um, so I let it soak in that for a little while. And I believe the Wood Whisperer did a uh, video on that, on how he cleans his bits and blades. And it's that same kind of pitch remover that I use. Uh, and it, it does does really good work. And after I clean them all and, and uh, put them back in the tool and go to town on them, it, it works almost as good as new. It's, it's crazy. Um, and then after a while, like you said, sharpening, I, I send them out about every... Uh, six months to a year, and I'm actually trying out uh, a new company out of North Carolina. Uh, a gentleman that watches my other show, uh, Rock and H Woodshop, he contacted me. He works for a company called Union Grove Saw and Knife, and uh, told me about his his uh, organization that he works for. So I sent my blades, my Craftsman line blades, as well as a Freud Dado stack to him, and I should be getting those back fairly soon. Okay. Um, I, I believe I use the same thing you do. Um, if you use what Mark did a video on a while back, I'm 99% sure that he used, um, Rockler's pitch and resin remover. Mm -hmm, um, exactly. And that's, that's what I use. And in fact, I, I, I'm due, I need to go pick up some more, but for you guys that want to get started, um, the, the, one of the cheapest ways I found to do it is is to go through Rockler. They have their pitching, uh, pitching, <laughs> pitch and <laughs> resin remover all in a kit. So it comes with like a quart. I think it's a quart of of the that remover. It comes with a. Um, it looks like almost like an an oil changing drum. Uh, it that comes with it that you can put your blade in and submerge it. it comes with another little cup that you put your router bits in. Um, and, I, I was in Rockler just the other day. I think I saw it somewhere around $29, $30. Um, and that's pretty good to get you started because now you, you buy the kit and then once you're out of that pitch and resin remover, you go back and I, I want to say it's maybe like 15 bucks just to get another quart. Um, and, and you already have all the containers, um, to, to do that. And I want to say I clean... I try to clean about every two to three months, um, and that really is depending on how often I'm in the shop and or how often I use that that tool. Um, my router bits, 
my straight bit, uh, my round over bit, those get cleaned a little more than maybe my V groove um, or my Roman OG. Those just don't get used that much, so they don't get cleaned as often. Um, but somebody else mentioned uh, Goo Gone. I haven't tried it, but they told me they put a little Goo Gone on and a toothbrush. Um, I actually might give it a try because I got Goo Gone out there. I got yeah. a toothbrush out there, um, and I'm out of pitch and resin remover. So I might, this coming week or something, bust out one of my blades and, and try that on there and see I how that goes. I heard somebody uh, mention one time uh, on a comment section uh, that I had that they use uh, Simple Green. I don't know how I don't know how well that would work, but I don't well, know. Well, Simple Green's an all organic uh, cleaning compound. I mean, in fact, Simple Green for the longest time that I can remember when I was actually working on boats and stuff. That's that's all we used. And the Coast Guard was simple green. I mean, we would have 55-gallon barrels of it just stacked. Um, and that's it. We would fill our little squirt balls with it. And that's what we used um, to clean everything. So I don't know how well it would work to remove the pitch and resin, but it is great cleaner for other things. Hmm. So There you go. Some, some things to try for you people. Yeah. Y- y'all give us kickback on that let us know if it works uh, and if you already use it let us know how it works I, yeah. i'm i'm really curious to find out yeah i mean if you have another method a preferred method let us know um you know i'm off for trying to give things a new shot and and try things um especially if if i'm at where i'm at now where i need to go buy something new to clean i'm i'm off for trying something new so all right, well, I want to mention one thing to you guys. Um, Woodcraft has partnered with Craftsy. Um, Craftsy is an online um, website that you can go and pay for classes from sewing to embroidery to woodworking to writing a book. You name it, it's on Craftsy. If it's a craft, there's a class on it. Um, so Woodcraft partnered um, with Craftsy, and they are offering a bandsaw class. It is called the Bandsaw, Setting Up for Successful Sawing. Right now, it is free. The class is put on by Andy Ray, um, and I haven't started. I've signed up for it, and I believe there's five different lessons in there, and each lesson, I think, runs around 30 minutes. Um, so I'll put a link in the show notes to that. You guys head over and sign up for that. Um, if you're interested in seeing a new method on setting up your bandsaw, and I think it goes all the way through cutting dovetails um, with your bandsaw. So let us know if you like that. Um, and and like I said, I, I signed up. Hopefully I'll start watching it here in the next week or so when I actually have time. Yeah, so, that's, that's awesome. I really like it when those uh, local companies like that uh, sponsor – uh, such things as that to give those beginning woodworkers and, and crafters just a, a go at learning something new. Yeah, well, so for those of you that don't really know, woodcraft's very limited in where they're at, and there's not very many in the United States. Um, but they offer courses. You can actually go in there and take turning courses. In fact, I took, I've taken two turning courses there. Um, I go in there and talk to them guys for everything. They've helped me restore old planes for my grandfather. You can take courses on pretty much anything. Well, they offer a bandsaw course, the basics of bandsaw, that teaches you um, how to set it up, how to run it, how to make all the basic cuts, and then they teach you how to make a simple bandsaw box. A course that runs, I think, about $85, and it's a whole day. Um, But not everybody can get to Woodcraft to take this class. So what better way to partner with an online source um, and and somebody as well-known as Andy Ray in bandsawing to put out a free course? Um, And I I would go sign up for it now because it's free. I don't know how long you'll stay free because most of the other courses run anywhere between $10 and $30 on Craftsy. So at some point I would foresee them adding a cost to this course um, but once you're signed up for it, 
it, it's free forever for you. Um, once you have it in your catalog, it's free. You don't ever have to pay for that course again. Yep. So you better sign up. <laughs> yeah. So all right. I think well, cool. that about wraps us up. If if you want to uh, go ahead, I know you have uh, some shout outs you want to do. Exactly. You want to um, close it out for us? I will. Uh, you know that that we do. What we do here is is only made possible because of people who listen to the show and and share the the comments, uh, share the, the actual show itself, and just give us feedback on anything that we do. And uh, there's a few people that I wanted to give a special thank you uh, for sharing and commenting on our show, and that is uh, Paul Mayette. He is actually a viewer of Rock and H Woodshop, and I believe he knows who you are too, Jeremy. Um, Steve Carmichael, uh, for the Carmichael workshop, uh, he actually uh, commented and shared our, our uh, last show that we had. Uh, and Tom Pritchard, uh, I believe he uh, commented on the website. Um, so that was much appreciated. That was on our very first show. Uh, so, Tom, we, we appreciate that very much. And uh, Jim Davis also sent us a personal email and was asking some questions uh, and just said that he really liked listening to the show. So, guys, I wanted to thank you for for doing that for us. Uh, if it if it's not for people like you, the people who don't know about us won't be able to find us. Uh, so, thank you very much. And as always, we want to thank you for listening to this show. Uh, we had a great time. We hope you can join us again. Uh, Woodshop 101 is basically a show that brings the basics of woodworking and more to you. And if you would, uh, if you remember that if you like the show, you want to hear more, you can find us on iTunes by searching uh, Woodshop 101 Podcast. Uh, subscribe so you won't miss the next episode. Um, if you don't have iTunes, don't worry about that because we are also on a website based program, which you can go to woodshop101podcast.com slash listen. That's L I S T E N, listen. Um, there you'll find links for streaming each episode through the website onto your smartphone, tablet, or computer. And uh, a big update that we released last show is that we are now on YouTube. So if you have issues with streaming from the website or uh, you don't have iTunes, things of that nature, then just go to YouTube and uh, search Woodshop 101 Podcast. There you'll find our channel. Be sure and hit that subscribe button because the more subscribers that we have, the better the opportunity we will have for sponsorships in the future. Uh, so we really need to to get as much publicity of the show out there and uh, bring it to the public eye. Um, that way we can have better chances for the sponsorships. Uh, so be sure and hit that subscribe button and enjoy each and every show when we make a post. Um, if you have a question, you can email us at woodshop101podcast at gmail.com or you can leave us a voicemail on Skype even by searching Woodshop 101 Podcast. There you'll find a link for the voicemail. So just click on that and you can leave us a voicemail and we will possibly feature that on the next show and answer your question. Um, you can also find us on Twitter uh, at Woodshop 101 Pod, that's P O D, uh, and Facebook, uh, just searching Woodshop 101 Podcast. Um, we post new episodes every two weeks, so we hope to hear from you soon. And from Jeremy and myself, uh, we wish you well, and please remember to be safe in your shops. And we will see you guys next time. Bye.